Hi, I'm Melanie Dellis with Muse Curatorial Consulting Group, and this is Muse Stories, where we uncover the unusual histories hidden around us. Today on Muse Stories, you'll notice that Karen is not by my side, and that is because she is still traveling in Texas visiting her family. We thought it'd be really cool if, while we're both traveling, we share with you some objects that were special to our families. Last week's episode, Karen um, showed you some cottageware that was from her mom's collection. So if you haven't checked that out, please do, because it's really cute, really adorable, and the, the history of it is really super cool. And this week, I wanted to share with you my Greek great-grandmother's bread stamp. So I'm it's half Italian and I am half Greek. And so I was raised with the Catholic Italian Easter and the Greek Orthodox Easter. So I had the benefit of sharing in all of the celebrations and the traditions that went along with those with both of those Easter's. And so this week in pre in preparing um, the foods and everything for Easter, I was making the Italian Easter bread and the Greek Easter cookies, and it got me thinking about the object that I wanted to share with you today. And I remembered that I had my great-grandmother's bread stamp. And this is what it looks like. That's the stamp. I'll get a little closer so you can see the inscriptions. And it's also on the handle too, but this is the actual stamp right here. And it's the lid of the bowl where you would um, grind up the grains for the bread, for the dough. Bread stamps have a really long history with new kingdom frescoes in Egypt depicting the actual act of stamping the bread some 3,500 years ago. And Greek and Roman and Byzantine and Islamic bread stamps, mostly bronze, have been found in archaeology and depicted in art. And even in the ruins of Pompeii, archaeologists have discovered a 2,000-year-old loaf of bread perfectly preserved underneath a layer of volcanic ash. And it had an inscription on it, like a little stamp, of the person's name who baked the bread. And in ancient Rome, this was a very common practice of stamping the bread with the person's name, the baker's name, or the family who owned the bread's name. Um, the average person didn't have an oven in their home that could accommodate baking bread. So they would mix the dough, they would rise the dough at home, and then they would take it to the local baker and he would put it in a communal oven. But before it went in the oven, they would stamp the bread with their family's name on it so that once it was in the oven uh, with dozens and dozens of other loaves from other families, they would know when it came out whose bread was whose. Um, and in 168 BC, uh, the Romans formed a baker's guild called the Collegium Pistorum. And it wasn't soon after that that the Roman government decided to take it over and regulate the cost of bread and the size of the bread that was sold. So once a member of the so there were some benefits and drawbacks to being a member of this guild. Uh, one of the benefits was, like the major benefit, was that once, okay, so you were, unlike traditional uh, trades, you were not a slave. You were a free man or woman, and, uh, well, man, and your family and you received all of the benefits of being a free Roman citizen. Now, some of the drawbacks included that once you were a member of the guild, you could not be anything but a baker. You were a baker for life. So hopefully you like to bake because you were stuck with that job. Um, and the other drawback was you were not allowed to associate with comedians or gladiators, and you could not go to any performance at the amphitheater. So, you know, I don't know. I think being free you know, citizen of Rome, not going to the amphitheater. I mean, the, the benefits probably outweighed the drawbacks in the end. Um, so, um, but, but since under Roman law, the bread was regulated um, from the cost to the size, if something was wrong with it, like if it was sold and it was too small and the, and the, and the soldiers saw it and somebody reported you, 
stamping the bread was important because it told the government who to punish if something was wrong with the bread. It had your name on it, so you know, you, you'd get in trouble. And um, there was also certain marks, not just your family name or your name, but certain marks that were stamped into the bread to designate that the bread was free and you could give it out because there were certain people who were designated to receive free bread and free bread was also handed out at large festivals and games. And so the baker would stamp it with a special mark so people would know that that bread was okay to give away. So in um, the ancient tradition of the Orthodox Church, uh, we're going to travel to Greece right now, um, the uh, communion is carried out through wine and bread. And the bread is specially baked for this purpose. And it's called the prosphora. And that means that which is offered in Greek, which makes sense. You know, you're offering it at communion. So the bread is made up of two separate round pieces of dough and they're placed one on top of each other and they're baked together to form one single loaf. And this represents the two natures of Christ, his human nature and his divine nature. But before baking, the prosphora is stamped with a seal, much like this one, um, usually with the sign of the, bearing the image of the cross. And the Greek letter, well, the letters, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll, I'll put it more towards the uh, camera in a second. But with the, with the letters I, C, X, C, N, I, K, A. And on my great grandma's bread stamp, that is in the top of the cross, the middle of the cross, and the bottom of the cross. And um, those Greek letters together traditionally mean Jesus Christ conquers. The I, C, and the X, C are the first and last letters in the Greek words for Jesus Christ, Jesus and Christ. And Nika, or N I K A, is connected to the word for victory, which we all know in Greek mythology is Nike, the goddess of victory. So um, it's a derivation of that. And during the preparation of the Eucharist, after the, the bread is baked, the um, bread is given to the priest. And during the preparation of the Eucharist, the priest first cuts out, he cuts out the center. I'll show you, I'll give you a close up view. I know that looks weird, me putting this in front of the camera and then my large hands and whatever. Um, but so the priest will first cut out this center square with, um, that has the stamp designs with the letters I, C, X, C, and N, I, K, A. And this becomes the body of Christ. Next, he cuts out the um, large triangle on the left, right here, which is in honor of the Virgin Mary. And next, he will cut out these three, I'm sorry, these nine small triangles on the right. And those triangles commemorate the angels, the prophets, the apostles, the martyrs, um, the holy unmercenaries, Joachim and Anna, um, all, and all the saints, including the saint of that day's liturgy. The last cuts are the, the little squares right here at the top and the bottom, uh, which remember specific names of the living and the dead. And those squares are all placed into the chalice with the wine in it and given to the people at communion. So it's a, it's a really special, long, um, rich history, rich traditions that are very special to so many people, um, very special to me. So I'm happy that I got to share this with you from my great grandma, um, then from my grandma and then my mom and now me. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and please um, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram at Muse Stories. Check out our website, MuseCuratorial.com. And remember, unusual histories are hidden all around us. Thanks.